Let's rewind the clock a couple years. When young, naive, innocent Logan was in the sixth grade, our, our school had a camping trip called Mohican. And we were there for like five days, so you know, we would hike, we would build fires, we'd throw tomahawks. We found out that one of my friends had a problem wetting the bed, which was kind of weird, but it was it sucked even more for me because I was in the bunk underneath him. Anyways, this place was all about self-discovery. Now there was this one kid in our grade who was a bit different, and I don't mean different like he was the quiet kid who played the oboe. I mean different like he would pretend to be a dragon and run around screeching at people before school started. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounded like. So this kid, let's call him Carl, he was a bigger kid, right? And he was known to uh, actually beat people up in the bathroom. So anyways, every night at camp, bunk 13, Carl would stay up all night. He would not sleep. And what's more, he was very, he was very vocal about it because the entire night, from bunk 13, you'd hear Carl yelling, Nocturnal, 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 nocturnal. And at first we were like, ha ha, Carl, you, you weirdo, go to bed. But after two to three nights of yelling, nocturnal, nocturnal. Nocturnal. Every night we were like, oh shit, this dude might actually be nocturnal. And then a rumor started that one kid one night saw him talking to a raccoon. Who knows? But needless to say, everyone in the cabin was losing sleep because this kid just would not shut up at night. So picture this, you got a camp full of drowsy, dumb sixth graders throwing tomahawks and trying to identify poison oak. It was a disaster. Kids were getting hit in the head with tomahawks at every turn. So one night, one of the kids in our cabin was over it, right? So he goes up to Carl and he says, Hey, Carl, we all know you're nocturnal and stuff, but would you mind being quiet for tonight? I just, I just want to get some sleep. You see, though, Carl must not have liked that question because Carl got out of his bed and threw a padlock at the kid's face. Yes, that's right, a padlock. The kid's lips were bleeding so bad that he had to get sent home, but somehow they let Carl stay with a warning. That's right, the kid who threw a padlock at another kid's face was allowed to stay and continue throwing tomahawks at camp. Now looking back as an adult, I'm aware that our camp counselors were probably uh, like permanently on drugs, but I digress. Day four comes around and little sixth grade Logan is so fucking exhausted. And all I want to do is find tadpoles and build fires and run around and do fun camps stuff, but this kid Carl was ruining it with his nocturnal bullshit! So one day, we're walking to plant identification class, and Carl is at it again. Nocturnal, 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 nocturnal. Someone had to stop this madness, man, so I put my foot down, I sack up, and I say, Yo, Carl, shut the fuck up! And for whatever reason, he had big double D batteries at the time. Maybe he shoved them up his butt at night and that's why he was always awakened because he had energy, right? But anyways, he threw one of his ass batteries at me and he screamed, Make me! And this kid was bigger than me at the time. I didn't have muscles yet. So I was like, damn, am I about to fight this kid? And then I was like, no way, because he'd probably try to bite my ear off or something. So I did the next best thing. And as Carl was walking in the door in front of me, I shut the door on him. That's right. I tried to smush Carl in the door frame. And for some reason, I thought that would get my point across. But oh, no, Carl freaking snapped in front of everyone. He grabbed me. I grabbed him. I'm like, oh, shit, it's going down. I'm fighting the raccoon kid. I slammed him up against the wall. At this point, everyone is like, what is happening? The camp counselors are off doing drugs somewhere in the forest. It's freaking chaos. My forearm is on his neck. I got him pinned against the wall. And this dude almost instinctively cocks his head back and sinks his teeth into my arm. I'm like, did this kid just bite me? Everyone's like, did that kid just bite Logan? I had never seen this tactic in a fight before. I was only in sixth grade. I didn't know what was happening. So I let go partially because I'm in pain and partially because I think I have rabies now, but I'm like, okay, you want to fight dirty? Let's fight dirty, you nocturnal son of a bitch. So then I run. That's right. I run away from the table, but this kid is chasing me. He wanted to finish what he started and chew my entire arm arm off. The whole lunchroom is watching this. I have had enough at this point, so I give my battle call. Handelah! I grab a chair from under the table and as hard as I can throw it at his face as he's foaming at the mouth chasing me. Boom! Headshot! 
right to the dome, bro. Carl collapses on the floor and he starts screaming, I'm gonna get you. You're gonna pay for this, you son of a bitch. I'm like, shit, bro. I gotta go treat my arm. So I run away. Word quickly spread and the counselors decided that throwing a padlock at a kid's face and chewing a hole in my arm was enough evidence to send Carl home. And little sixth grade Logan was hailed as the chair-throwing hero. We all got a good sleep that night and lived rabies-free happily ever after.